These are four of the best flagship camera smartphones on the planet. So today we'll be comparing the iPhone 15 Pro Max, Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Oppo Find X7 Ultra and Vivo X100 Pro in this extremely detailed camera comparison where we will be comparing day and night photos and videos. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is kitted with a 48 megapixel main camera and three 12 megapixel sensors for the ultra wide, periscope and selfie camera. The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra packs in a 200 megapixel main camera, two 12 megapixel sensors for the ultra wide and selfie, a 10 megapixel telephoto camera, and a new 50 megapixel periscope sensor. If you would like to test out the S24 Ultra for yourself, it's worth mentioning that Versus.com and myself are currently running a giveaway until the end of March, where you could win a free Samsung Galaxy S24, S24 Plus, or S24 Ultra. So be sure to subscribe to both of our channels and don't forget to click the link down below. The Oppo Find X7 Ultra houses a quad 50 megapixel camera setup consisting of a new one inch type main sensor, an ultra wide camera and two periscope sensors as well as a 32 megapixel selfie camera. And lastly the Vivo X100 Pro makes use of a triple 50 megapixel setup consisting of a slightly older one inch type main sensor, an ultra wide camera and a single periscope sensor. It also has a 32 megapixel selfie camera. Does Apple's best iPhone ever still have what it takes? Will Samsung's at advanced post-processing, put it in first place. Does Oppo's dual periscope setup outshine the rest? Or will Vivo's incredible flagship ace the test? This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. What's up guys, this is Technic recording a selfie video on four class leading flagship camera smartphones. All of them can record a 4K 60fps selfie recording, including the new Vivo X100 Pro since it recently got it with a software update. Updates, let me know your thoughts on their video as well as their audio qualities. The iPhone and Samsung have the most stable selfie video. The Samsung and Oppo look the most natural, while the iPhone is oversaturated and the Vivo is undersaturated. The iPhone and Samsung both offer 4K portrait selfie video, and while the Samsung is slightly dim, it still produces the most detail and looks the most natural. Ultra wide selfie photos has the Oppo overexposed but with fantastic white balance, the Vivo 2 smooth and the iPhone 2 sharp, leaving the Samsung as the most balanced. The Oppo and Vivo have the widest field of view and while the Samsung is more cropped in, it still takes the win here. The Samsung continues its streak with one time selfies but it does have quite a narrow focal length. And while it looks just as good in portrait mode, the Oppo has the most accurate edge detection. Moving on to their back cameras, using Using their respective main sensors, the Oppo and Vivo produce the best natural depth due to their 1 inch type sensors. And while the Vivo has fantastic dynamic range, the Oppo looks cleaner and is on par with the iPhone. And when using portrait mode, the Samsung's colors are a bit odd, the Oppo's edge detection isn't perfect, leaving the iPhone with the cleanest depth and the Vivo with the best HDR. But when switching to their periscope cameras, the Vivo seriously impressed me with DSLR-like background blur insane detail, white balance contrast and superior tonal range. However, only the Samsung and Oppo have secondary zoom cameras which allows for greater flexibility, but the Samsung looks a little dated when compared to the Oppo. The iPhone doesn't utilize its periscope when too close to a subject, and when comparing the other three, there's no doubt that the Oppo comes out on top in terms of minimum focusing distance. Taking a photo with their mains at their maximum megapixel counts has the iPhone looking the cleanest and this is evident when cropping in by 400%. However, the Samsung looks slightly better when cropped due to less sharpening as you can see when looking at the logo on my shirt. Taking another native shot but this time of an object has me leaning more toward the Oppo since it captures all the foreground detail and still exposes the sky in the background. This shot was actually put up on my YouTube community page and other socials as a poll where most of you voted for image C, which is indeed the Oppo. But I have to say the iPhone and Vivo look slightly better when focusing on the subject itself and not the sky in the background. Almost no one voted for image B, which is the Samsung. 
and I agree with this too due to its terrible overexposure. But when cropping in, the Samsung actually packs in the most amount of detail, with the Oppo seriously lagging behind. The last native shot I took was of a palm tree glistening in the sun with a blue cloudy sky behind it, and when considering all of these factors, the Vivo stood out to me the most. But when cropped in, the Vivo and Oppo lag behind the Samsung. The iPhone looks decent but is way too sharp, while the Samsung is filled with the most amount of detail. Back to binned photos using their mains. This pic was taken while the subject was walking in order to test out shutter speed to see which keeps moving objects more in focus. The Vivo is the only one here with a dedicated mode for this known as Snapshot, and while it certainly took the fastest photo, all of them managed to keep everything in focus. When you get too close to a subject, all of them automatically shift to their ultrawides for macro mode. The Oppo once again lags behind here, with the others offering equally great detail. But the Vivo made this cactus look most natural and balanced. Taking a regular ultra-wide shot, the Oppo and Vivo are the only ones with a high megapixel option for pixel binning, offering more naturally processed shots. The Oppo has the widest field of view here and exposes things beautifully, but I feel that the Vivo packs in slightly more detail. Taking bin shots with their main cameras of the same scene has the Samsung oversaturated, the Oppo and Vivo slightly undersaturated, and the iPhone with the best overall balance. However, in terms of overall detail and color, I have to give this one to the Vivo. They all offer two times lossless zoom using their mains, and once again the Vivo takes the lead. The Samsung and Oppo kick in their first telephoto cameras at three times zoom, so they naturally come out looking better than the iPhone and Vivo, but the Oppo has the Samsung beat in detail thanks to its first telephoto camera being a much larger periscope sensor. The Samsung's second zoom camera, that being a periscope, kicks in at 5x zoom, which is the same as the iPhone's, but the Samsung shot comes out better. The Oppo has the furthest reach thanks to its 6x periscope sensor, and the Vivo's periscope only reaches a 100mm focal length, but in my opinion, looks the best. They all once again offer lossless zoom with their periscopes at a 10x zoom range, but the Samsung packs in the most amount of detail at this focal length. The iPhone may look like it's more zoomed in, but I assure you I've set it to 10 times. Its focal length is just a bit different. 25 times is the max zoom for the iPhone and it suffers from the most noise grain, while the Oppo takes the best snap thanks to its AI zoom feature. At 50 times digital zoom, the Samsung is too soft, the Oppo is too sharp, and the Vivo is somewhere in between. The Samsung produces the most detail of the object, but the Oppo generates a more natural representation of the entire image. It's a similar case when zooming in by 100 times, but this is the max zoom for the Samsung and Vivo. And while the Oppo can reach the furthest at 120 times, it's not quite as good as it was at 100 times. Moving on to video, the Samsung is the only one that can record 8K video with its periscope sensor, and it looks fantastic. This was missing in its predecessor. However, they can all record 4K 60fps video using their periscopes, leaving the Samsung and Oppo 2 underexposed, and the iPhone only slightly ahead of the Vivo. Once again, the Samsung and Oppo are the only ones with an additional zoom sensor, and while the Oppo's tonal range is a bit off, it's more exposed, packs in more detail, and has incredible natural depth. The Vivo is the only one which utilizes its periscope in portrait video, and it can do so at 4K, but it struggles due to focusing issues. The Oppo looks like a bit of a cut and paste job, the Samsung is way too underexposed, leaving the iPhone looking better than the rest, but far from perfect. It's a similar situation when recording portrait video with their mains, but this time the Vivo keeps the subject in focus the entire time and comes out looking slightly better than the iPhone. But when disabling portrait video, the Oppo comes out on top with insane detail and natural depth, despite it not offering 8K which the Samsung does better than the Vivo. The Oppo takes the lead in terms of focusing speed, which is closely followed by the Samsung and Vivo, and they all leave the iPhone in the dust. They can all shoot 240fps slow motion video at 1080p resolution, but Samsung have stepped things up with 4K 120fps slow mo video. However, it's rather underexposed, leaning me more toward the iPhone and Oppo. They can all shoot continuous 4K 60fps video, allowing them to seamlessly switch from their ultrawides to their mains to their periscopes, but the Samsung switches between its lenses smoother and can zoom in the most all the way up to 20 times digital zoom. They all offer action stabilization modes and they are all just as stable even while walking very fast. However, the iPhone and Samsung look the best as they offer the highest resolutions even when using their ultrawides, 
The Vivo cannot use its ultra wide when using an action mode. The iPhone and Samsung once again come out on top when using their respective stability modes with their main cameras, but all of them crop in when using these modes. So if you don't want a crop in factor, you best use their standard stability in regular video mode, which they can all do at 4K 60fps with their mains. The iPhone and Samsung offer the best stability here, but the Oppo is not far off and offers the best video in terms of detail and exposure. They can also all record standard ultra-wide video at 4K 60fps. The Oppo's field of view is the widest, I mean it even manages to get part of its holder in the frame. They are all very stable, but the Oppo is just not quite as good as the rest in terms of video quality. The iPhone and Samsung are both great, but I have to give this one to the Vivo. Recording 4K ultrawide video at night has the iPhone control light noise the best, the Samsung is the brightest, the Oppo doesn't look terrible, but the Vivo looks the best overall thanks to fantastic color, minimal noise grain, and loads of detail. When recording 4K main video at night, the Vivo is the only one which drops its frame rate in order to brighten up the scene. And it does just that without dipping in quality or suffering from noise grain. The Oppo isn't far off in terms of detail. Recording 4K video of me using their mains at night has the Oppo completely forget about the background, the Samsung struggles to focus and the Vivo has fantastic balance but is a tad too overexposed leaving the iPhone as the best overall. It's a similar case when using portrait video modes, though the iPhone forgets to blur the background, so I have to give this one to the Vivo. The Vivo is the only one which sticks to its periscope sensor when recording cinematic video, but unfortunately it's far too underexposed, and even though the Oppo is limited to 1080p in portrait mode, it easily takes the win here. When disabling portrait video, the iPhone won't allow you to use the periscope in such a dark scene, so it looks rather bad. The Samsung is almost as terrible and the Oppo looks absolutely incredible when using its 3x zoom periscope. The Oppo's 6x periscope sensor looks just as detailed, but unfortunately its tonal range is very off, which leaves the Vivo looking the best. But taking a photo of me using their periscopes at night has things come out quite the opposite with the iPhone clearly looking the best. Unfortunately, that victory was short-lived, as it came out rather terrible when enabling portrait mode. The Samsung looks great, but tonal range is very off, leaving me favoring the Vivo, which packs in slightly more detail than the Oppo. However, the Oppo looks a lot better when using its 3x periscope lens in portrait mode, though the Samsung isn't far off. And the Oppo looks even better with portrait mode disabled at 3 times, which offers fantastic natural background blur. Taking a night mode photo of me using their mains has the Samsung produce a very dreamy photo, but it's held back by over sharpening. The Oppo is way too soft and the Vivo doesn't seem to increase its ISO levels enough, leaving the iPhone looking the most natural. Unfortunately, the iPhone underexposes in portrait mode. Fortunately, the Samsung softens its image, which puts it on par with the Vivo, which almost looks picture perfect. Taking a night photo using their mains of a brighter scene with more character has me favoring the iPhone due to its higher dynamic range and impeccable contrast. This next photo has got to be my favorite as it shows how light areas can affect dark areas and vice versa. The Samsung and Vivo compensate exposure way too much, which affects the scene's dynamic range. The Oppo nails shadows and lighting, but overexposes the white chairs, while the iPhone provides the most natural representation of the scene, probably since it does away with post-processing. I took this shot purely to see how well they all handle light noise, and the Samsung is the only one which shows detail within the light bulbs. So if we were only focusing on light noise, then the Samsung takes the win here. However, looking at this photo as a whole, the Samsung is very off in terms of exposure and tonal range, which leans me more toward the iPhone, but then again, that's a bit too underexposed. The Oppo is more exposed, but most of the colors are muted, which leaves us with the Vivo's seriously impressive image, thanks to vibrant colors and incredible detail. This photo was also put up as a poll, and most of you voted option D, which is of course the Vivo. Barely anyone voted for option B, which is of course the Samsung. The Samsung also had a hard time taking a decent ultra-wide photo at night, which once again makes the Vivo stand out the most. Taking the same shot but using their mains has the iPhone suffer from terrible lens flare, 
The Vivo also suffers from some lens flare, so the Samsung takes the win here. Lens flare is still apparent on the iPhone and Vivo at two times lossless zoom, leaning me once again toward the Samsung. But the Samsung's three times optical zoom telephoto is very outdated when compared to the Oppo's three times optical periscope shot. The Oppo looks just as good when shifting to its six times optical sensor, with the Vivo's 4.3 times photo not far behind. At 10 times lossless zoom, the Vivo shows the rest who's boss, and the Vivo is also my pick at 25 times digital zoom, which is where the iPhone caps off in style no doubt, with such fantastic noise grain. At 50 times, the Samsung completely ignores the bricks in the background, leaning me more towards the Oppo. And while you can still make out the bricks on the Oppo at 100 times zoom, the Vivo is the clear winner this time. But of course the Oppo can reach even further thanks to 120 times zoom. However, that doesn't mean that it should. Taking ultra-wide selfies at night has the Samsung come out on top, and the same can be said for ultra-wide portrait shots. But it completely changes tonal range when the flash is on, leading me more toward the Vivo. Setting them all to one times at night once again has me favoring the Samsung, and no, there is no beautify mode enabled on the Vivo, I just look that good. The Vivo looks a little more realistic in portrait mode, but the Samsung takes home another win. However, the Samsung once again changes up tonal range when the flash is enabled, so the Vivo strikes back. And despite the iPhone and Samsung having 4K selfie portrait video mode options, the Vivo came out looking noticeably better. I thought we'd end things the same way we started, so this is what selfie video looks like on all four devices at night. Let me know your thoughts of their video and microphone quality in the comment section down below. So now it's time to get to the results based on my personal and professional opinion. And since our opinions may differ, be sure to let me know if you agree with my findings. As expected, I feel that the iPhone 15 Pro Max offers the best video stability when using the ultra-wide main and selfie cameras. I also feel that it is the most consistent throughout all of its sensors. However, its main camera is often used instead of its periscope, and when the periscope is used, I find it to be too close to the subject. I really hope to see a middle focal length sensor to be included in the next iPhone Pro Max device. Speaking of different focal lengths, the Galaxy S24 Ultra fills that gap with a slightly outdated 3x telephoto camera. And while its new 5x periscope is great, it's not quite on the same level of the competition, even with the latest software updates. That said, Samsung have done wonders with their microphone this year, and it's still the best phone out there for selfie photos and videos. It takes the best 8K videos around, which can now be utilized with that new periscope sensor, and its continuous zoom performance in a single video is in a league of its own. The Oppo Find X7 Ultra is the world's first smartphone to house two periscope sensors, so it naturally takes the best zoomed photos in any lighting condition. It is certainly the most flexible device here since it sports 3x and 6x zoom cameras, which is great for closer portraits or distant buildings. And while it can zoom in the furthest, it does doesn't always provide the absolute best high range zoom quality. But out of all of these devices, the Vivo X100 Pro comes out strong where it matters most. That being main camera performance as well as portrait photos and videos across multiple different focal lengths. Not only does it now have 4K cinematic video, but I found its main camera to produce better results than the Oppo, which actually has a newer 1 inch type sensor. It's also a great all rounder since its periscope sensor sits in between the focal lengths of the Oppo. Oppo's two zoom lenses, and even though it only has one telephoto camera, it still packs a serious punch at high zoom ranges. It also recently received a software update, which added 4K selfie video, and the cherry on top of all of this is that it has incredibly fast shutter speed and a class leading ultra wide camera, which takes some of the best macro photos I have ever seen. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed testing out some of the highest rated flagship camera smartphones in the world. Let me know your thoughts on these results in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click that link so that you can participate in the giveaway. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.